Well, welcome back to Horse Racing Nation YouTube. Pleased to be joined again by the Paddock Prince. He's David Levitch. I'm wearing white after Labor Day. What do you think of that fashion choice, David? Yeah, you don't seem like a person that would follow fashion trends. <laughs> well, uh, solidarity with Sam Houston. Hopefully they'll figure out their HISA and Texas situation because it'd be a shame not to be able to play them come January. But uh, it's been our pleasure to get to play Churchill and Belmont at Aqueduct with your picks. Positive ROI. Want to focus on Churchill Downs. They've already kicked off week two. They started Wednesday or about to start as we're recording this. And David, I, I have to say, I think my man Julian Leperu is having himself a month. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised. He had a bit, you know, a kind of on low, low because he didn't ride. I think he rode like 50 or 60 horses, but he had like eight or nine good stakes placings and kind of started then. And I'm not really surprised that he's doing well at Rion Friday. And I mean, he's a very good rider, so I'm not really surprised, but, but it seems like, like he's really um, grooves again. Love to see it. Uh, on the negative side of things, uh, three guys who certainly capable of winning races uh, on the big stage at Churchill Downs, Adam Biskitza, James Graham, Rafael Bayarano. two of those three have nicknames, the Biscuit and the Lucky Charm. I'm sure Rafael does too. I'm not aware of it though. Uh, but more importantly, they failed to win a race last week. Have to think that turns around eventually. Yeah, there was a, a couple, I mean, even Gaffleone, I mean, he didn't have a winner I don't think until Sunday, I think it was, three days as well. So it's definitely some guys that have been struggling. I think one guy to point out, too, on this chart is, I mean, he's been riding for Tom Amos. He got his first stakes win, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But there's a couple of some up-and-comers, I think. I think like guys like Edgar Morales and even Gerardo Corrales, who's a very good rider. Yeah, Corrales, uh, one of those that just still seems not to get bet. And uh, the ROI isn't great here, so I'm guessing the, the winners he has had were the ones who got bet. But he did win more than expected, which is what the HRN impact me measures. And I'm glad you mentioned Morales because when he was an apprentice, not sure if you were following things then, but he was on fire and everyone was riding him, taking advantage of the weight break. And he did win races, lost the bug. Lost a little luster, but uh, this partnership with Amos this year, uh, he's won a ton of races, not just here, but at Horseshoe Indianapolis as well. And uh, wouldn't be surprised if he's setting himself up for a big winter. Yeah, and Corral is a road maker this past weekend. He won the million dollar um, the race. He, uh, gosh, the million dollar races at Kentucky Down. So, yeah. Yeah, he rode a lot of good horses for Cox as well at LA. I think it's a guy that, He's kind of under the radar in a way, but I, I, he's a very, very good rider. No, I think uh, th I think this is a, a pretty good group. And anytime you have uh, Gaffleone, who I mean, we talked about coming into the meet, uh, kind of a I hate to say man among boys, kind of a cliche. And, and there's a lot of talented riders in the room, but he really stood out. I thought in the spring and summer, but uh, rough go the first week for him, only a matter of time. I'm sure before he reasserts himself, but good to see the competition and some fresh names on top. Yeah. And you know, Tyler didn't start off great at Saratoga. Even after the meet, I don't think he'll struggle like that at church right. for much longer going into yeah. England. I think he'll struggle. Ricardo didn't win a lot the first week, but he had a, I think he had like a $60, $55, $58 um, on Saturday. So I think all the big guys will really pick it up, up this week. Yep. Uh, my, uh, my thought as well, especially with more racing to more opportunity. And uh, as we noted at the top, though, a positive ROI for you uh, at Saratoga. You haven't slowed down, David. Uh, looking at Churchill specifically, uh, was there anything you kind of were thinking last week that just ended up clicking and you're like, man, I, I got that right? Or uh, what do you think uh, helped you uh, finish on top week one? You know, when it's an all dirt meet, I think you have to watch for trends. And I always feel like maybe it's just in my head, but I feel it really plays towards forces that are closer to the pace. You rarely see pace collapses. Happened in the two-year-old stakes a little bit, but they were really moving up front in those races. So, you know, when you handicap your horses that are closer to the pace, because I just don't think it's attractive, it falls apart very well on a handicap there. I'm just kind of looking at horses that have 
speed or right on the pace. And I think, I think, I don't remember, were you against the Asmussen's in the two stakes races, the two year old races? Uh, I was against in the Pocahontas. I did think uh, Echo again was the nuts and obviously uh, didn't get that right. Now, admittedly, I didn't bet the horse at two to five, uh, but I, I just watched. I, I, w- I was wrong. I, I was pretty surprised at how poorly he ran. Yeah, hard for horses to go six furlongs, I feel like, to a mile and a sixteenth. So I do think with these Saratoga ships, as they start to stretch out, like he MEP, for example, is doing really well with two-year-old races right now. And stamina in them because they've been running two turns at Ellis Park or two turns on the grass somewhere. Yeah. To these two-year-olds that are starting to stretch out and really look <laughs> if they want to stretch out. I think that's one thing to also look at. Yeah, that's a great point about Kenny. And obviously there's no turf at Churchill and uh, there wasn't last year either, I don't think. Uh, So it'll be interesting to kind of see how he recalibrates when there is hopefully next year. But he's very willing to give him a debut on turf just to get that long race if he thinks they're two turn type horses and then come back on dirt. We talked about that in week one and it worked out for him uh, this race. And speaking of shippers, where they're coming from. Uh, no real surprises here and, and no real standouts. Uh, Kentucky Downs, positive ROI. The, the two winners uh, paid pretty well. Oaklawn had a couple decent winners, which kind of says you can come into this meet off a layoff and do well. Uh, I, I guess maybe, I don't know if it's a surprise, but uh, Belterra 0 for 13. And it's not like Churchill doesn't write lower end claiming races, but you know, when they're coming in from Colonial, the prestige the prestige that meet is picked up, obviously Saratoga, uh, it's pretty clear that the minor tracks struggle coming to Churchill. Yeah, and I was looking at today's card. I mean, it's a <clears> lot. <throat> I might see a little bit of a switch in that, but I'm not surprised that Belterra hasn't done well. I don't, honestly, it's almost like in New York when a horse comes from Finger Lakes, you kind of... <laughs> You look at the figures, really. That's a great really, analogy. Yeah, it's like, does this horse really make sense on paper, even though it's fictitious? It's one of those, it's just a whole nother ball, ball game of competition. So I'm not surprised at it. But I think Colonial Downs is that's really attractive, especially in these fall meet when they come from Colonial to the fall meet. That attract that's going to pick up more and more steam. I think they're getting more dates. So I'm not surprised at the opening weekend. Yeah, and uh, a lot of races at Colonial, they have a robust turf program. Obviously, all the races at Kentucky Downs are turf. And one takeaway from here, not necessarily, you know, track specific that they came from there, but turf to dirt, it's all dirt at Churchill. uh, And what we talked about with Kenny McPeak, too, not necessarily a downgrade to see these horses making surface moves, even if they were already in form and turf. And uh, the late, great John Asher always said the main track at Churchill was was kind to the turf hoof. So uh, maybe something to that is uh, we see with Colonial and Kentucky Downs uh, doing so well. Was there anything uh, negative that you were surprised that you're kind of recalibrating uh, for the new week of racing last week that you thought maybe you had a handle on or like, eh, it didn't go those right. Um, no, I, no, I think it's just kind of picking your spot plays with, with an all dirt meet. It's a little different when you have three turf races in a sweet week sequence. And then there's two, cause you, I'm not like a huge, I mean, I like track trends and gold rails and all that. If you know, they're playing much and to see what's going on and then really, hammer your strong opinions and when it's an all dirt me but it's in real really, you know it's five days a week now which seems crazy for an all dirt meet in september yeah. evan you know the product there are a lot of climbing races the next couple of days but the field sizes aren't bad so into the, the track and you know if you really like a horse and just fire and on those and now they're showing up for the money. Well, we'd be uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the Pennsylvania Derby on Saturday, part of a thirteen race card, uh, of which you will have uh, full card selections, the Grade One Cotillion, a bunch of other stakes on that day as well. Uh, but this drew a competitive, deep field. Uh, I. I'm very bullish on Taba. Uh, I know he, he got beat by Cyberknife in the Haskell. 
Uh, I'd love to, <laughs> to see five to two. Uh, I just think he's the most talented horse of this group. Uh, and that comes from a, someone who has a, a man crush on Skippy Longstocking. But I just think what we've seen, if he's right, um, you know, now that he has a race under his belt and ships back, uh, I think he's going to be tough to beat. It's going to be price dependent for me. I don't think I want less than two to one, but hate to make an 11 horse field seem easy, but I just can't see past him. Yeah, I don't people because I actually think he's a very likely winner of this race, too. If you watch the Haskell, he was tween horses in the second he got outside. He just really started to run. He drew a Good, like you said, it's second off the layoff. It's Baffert shipping and again. I just, I agree with you. I really think he's a very likely one. I wouldn't bet him. I don't really like betting low chalks, but if he's not, I don't think that's bad value on him. I mean, anywhere in like the six to five, five range, I probably wouldn't bet him to win. But in two to one, I really do think it's good value. Cyberknife beat him last time, but like I said, one's really, really running so. I do agree with you that I think I really like Taba second off the bench. All right. Well, I'm sure uh, among the other 12 races, you will have some other price plays, but uh, I can't fault you for leaning on the, the, what looks to me the most likely winner. We agree there uh, at parks, 13 race card. Paddock Prince will have it covered as he will at Churchill and Belmont and Aqueduct throughout the week. And uh, we'll wrap it all up again next week for uh, the final week at Churchill, but already gearing up for Keeneland, I'm sure, David. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Keen, I think the Keeneland fall meet is one of the best meets in the almost because it gives you that Breeders' Cup prep feel. It's not hot anymore. The weather is good racing and Keeneland, there's nothing better than going to the races. The Keenan, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, only negative is uh, UK is good, so probably uh, a little too much. Very blue. good, a little too much blue for my liking out there, but uh, we'll make do. Yeah, they are. Well, I mean, when there's a UK game, it may low because there's even more people people there. I feel like for the tailgates and well, they're, that they're there for the sure. first half, and then they leave for the stakes, which is nice because yeah. uh, you get to get get to enjoy the good races uh, without the mob, but uh, they, they do support the meet. Love that. It's a great environment, as you said, and the racing's even better. So I uh, don't want to get too far out of ourselves, though. That's two weeks away and still plenty of uh, positive ROI days ahead at uh, Churchill and Aqueduct, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The old, old Bach, um, I don't think the Bach <laughs> symbols working out too well, but, so, but they still have some good opportunities coming up and big races well as well the reps. Yep, yeah. Breeders' Cup preps are plenty uh, starting next week once we get through uh, the Parks uh, Festival. Again, Paddock Prince will have that covered Saturday. 13 races there, Churchill and Aqueduct uh, all the other days. And uh, we'll talk next week. Sounds good. Looking forward. All right, David Levitch, everybody. Paddock Prince available at picks.horseracingnation.com. Follow him on Twitter as well, Paddock underscore Prince. I'm EJXD2. Good luck.